in the end, two states were created as mm. a result of the, of the treaty mm-hmm. settlement, both of them born to some extent in violence, mm. um, and in the north, a lot of it was very was sectarian mm. violence. How did that um, affect that uh, the development of the Northern Ireland state in that early stage, Paul? Well, there, there isn't any question that, that unfortunately, in the end, um, both the Irish states were born in violence. And there is equally no question that it has a very alienating effect on, I would say, particularly urban Catholics, Catholic community in West Belfast in particular, which suffers as a consequence of this violence uh, uh, it, it, quite dramatically. Because quite simply, when you have two groups of people with guns, uh, the larger group of people with more guns will inflict more damage. And in this case, the larger group of people with more guns were the Unionists in Belfast. So there is no question that one of the problems is that the violence at this time, the shipyard expulsions of 1920, which Catholic workers lost their jobs, and previous upheavals of political tension, the Unionist leadership was always very careful, 1912, to get these people back into their jobs very quickly. This does not happen in 1920 because the Unionist leadership thinks we're in a fight to the death of the IRA here. We can't afford to care too much about that. But if you're a Catholic worker in the shipyards who's lost his job because some Protestant mob pushes you out, you're not going to take any cover from the fact that eight years before, when the same thing happened, the Unionist political class said, this must be reversed. It's bad. 